Assalamu alaikum. Audhu billah min al-shaytan al-rajim. I say that because today we're going to be uh, seeing, looking at the world of the jinn based on realistic footage of people, disbelievers by act. And they are also people who have never even picked up a Quran or they're the people that perceive Islam to be you know, terrorists, this, that, the other, primitives, even though the holy book has. So linking to what I just said, an example of every subject under the sun, this one deals with the world of the paranormal and it's Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 102. As you saw, it's mighty lengthy. That's one of the reasons I'm not gonna read it, you know, at least I'm citing it. So in it, there's a lot of information. Most importantly, it talks about how most recently in time, the demons who work with Suleiman because, or Solomon, however you wanna to refer to him, uh, Suleiman, Solomon, and this is the only scripture that makes sense of why the temple in Jerusalem was very majestic, very like extraordinary, like literally extraordinary. And it was because um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, allowed Solomon or Suleiman to have command over the jinn, the spirits, unseen spirits, which everybody has dealt with for thousands of years. Same verse, it says when it started, it says that the two angels, Harut and Marut, back in the ancient city of Babylon taught people the world of magic, which is dealing with the jinn. There's no magic unless you deal with the jinn, unseen spirits, you know, you summon them and you have to exchange things and they do things and that, that explains why all these people talk about curses that explains why they talk about spells and everybody knows that's true but let me stop talking and show you uh, what this modern day witch in North America has to say about the reason why she does this I don't want to wait for God to answer my prayers. That's why I'm a witch. All of the uh, religious witchcraft traditions have... Oh, God. Hey, girl, what's up? I told you guys about the jawbone, and here she is jumping out at me. Okay, we'll put you somewhere more stable. Quite rather simple. She needs help doing things. She doesn't have the patience for Allah, for God, and therefore she does it. So we see this here over and over and over the following verse in the Holy Quran. And seek help with patience and prayer. What can you say? Like two different contrasting things agree. You, there is definitely God, there's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sure. However, it takes patience and prayer. That's one of the first things he says in Surah Al-Baqarah prior to the verse I showed. Actually, the very first one says, and it's very difficult except for the believers to do this. Because I never really truly believed in the paranormal at all. Even when I was Christian, I was like, there has to be some explanation about Jesus driving demons and that and the other at the last days, probably an imagination in your death. I used to think that as a Christian. And then I kind of became an atheist because nobody really truly believes. But at the same time, I feel like they know what's going on. They, there's a few people like me that are truly, uh, honestly, not believers because they've never seen. I think most people have a pretty good idea of what we're doing most times. Anyhow, uh, let's hear these two other guys talk. Into the occult, you're opening a door and you might not be strong enough to close it. And then you have to call me. Someone wrote into my show, said, Michael, if you could meet the devil. Met him twice, personally. How'd that go? Not well the first time. 
Okay, so the guy in wearing black with a white collar, he's a Catholic Christian priest. And the other guy, he's just a TV host. And I don't know if you noticed, but I did how suspect, how suspicious the priest looks. And then, you know, he says he's seen the devil, Satan, at least, the real big dude, twice. Now, I believe part of that is true. I believe that he summoned some jinn and he said, you know, I want to talk to Satan and the jinn is going to, the jinn can pretend to be the ghost of an ancestor. The jinn can pretend to be the ghost of a friend, Satan, uh, Jesus. That's one, that one's very common. It, it can pretend to be anything except uh, a lie. That's the only from what I've done my research and seen my, her many credible stories, including uh, a very famous uh, sheik slash imam that I cannot think of. But if you see him, you probably know him. He's like an expert in this. But they, yeah, they pretend to be whoever you want to talk to and you cannot see them. So they're going to swear that, yeah, they they saw the devil or they saw Jesus or they saw whoever, you know. Blessed are the unbelievers. They will not be disappointed. <laughs> because part of believing is impactful on seeing the miracle, experiencing the miracle, bringing forth the miracle. So if you're not going to believe, you're not going to see him. <laughs> Unless, you know, he has an incredible amount of love for you to the point of like Saul of Tarsus, where he's going to force you to see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He Which he sometimes you does. Off your horse. Yeah. So pretty interesting. Uh, the guy, the TV host, he's been doing research, trying to sell really hard the existence of the jinn by saying spirits do exist. Look at this person doing this. Look at that person doing that. But after seeing that, I kind of feel like now he's doing it with a bad intention because he's laughing and carry on. I agree with him with 80% of what they're saying. But there's a 20% is like a curveball, a sketchy side to it in order to deceive. For example, they say, if you don't believe, they won't appear to you. I agree with that, but only because, not because you'll believe and you'll see, you make yourself see illusions, not because of that, but because the goal of the shaitan is to keep you away from the straight path. So if you truly, honestly, don't believe that there's such thing, the best thing the shaitan can do is stay away from you all completely so you keep thinking that and you'll eventually be led into hell. Because if he comes, if you are truly like innocent, like I was thinking there's no such thing, come on now, truly believe that honestly, and then they make it apparent to you that there is, well, you're going to start seeking God and that's not what they want. Uh, you know, when I was, when I first realized these things were true, somebody was doing something to me, somebody, and that's when they do that. But he says, um, they can make you, they can appear to you even if you don't believe, just like Saul of Tarsus made us believe. Saul of Tarsus is Paul, whom the Christians claim is Saint Paul, the one after Jesus, the one that most Muslim scholars accuse of changing the scripture. This Catholic priest, ordained Catholic priest, who knows the history of our Christianity, Jesus, the Messiah, Mary, all that practically admits that Paul is a deceiver that has taught the religion that leads to hell. He practically admits that there. So now we're going to see a black magic sorcerer, a black magic male witch in Mexico. And this dude is like supposedly a big deal. He's like the major like black witch slash sorcerer of the country. Nos referimos a lo que es el ámbito de la alta magia negra, la alta magia en la cual lo que se busca es principalmente alguna dádiva de poder, ya sea económico, ya sea amoroso, ya sea sexual, ya sea de diversa situación, pero a cambio de qué? A cambio del contexto de tu alma. Yo siempre he dicho que todos los seres humanos vamos a ser juzgados. Now this guy, even though they're equally disgusting because of what they do, this guy is a straight shooter. Literally, his words translated, I know Spanish. He says, um, yes, it works. Anything you want to achieve, whether it be this, that, the other, you know, a lot of debauchery, bad things, haram things. And then he says, 
play now tells you by the what cost. He says that the cost of your soul, I believe for sure, no doubt, that there, every single human being is going to be judged on the last day. So ultimately, mostly everybody knows what we're doing for good or for bad. May you choose the right path, inshallah. And I'll end the video with this uh, better explanation than I could do. The magician is a filthy, evil, disgusting creature of a human, excuse of a human, that has sold itself and its dignity and its izzah and its iman and its taqwa in order to do sacrilegious deeds for the demon. And that's why these things of get a uh, toad of a you know eye of a newt and go to the graveyard at 3 a.m. and get the blood of a donkey why because the jinn wants to see that sahir humiliate himself go to the graveyard at 3 a.m. do tawaf around the grave who's gonna do that only somebody who has sold himself to the devil so the shaitan feels a sense of ego look what I can make this guy do right Re run him around with the tip of my finger do whatever i tell him to do so the sahir becomes the worshiper of the jinn not the other way around how can a human being control the jinn how can anybody believe this by what will a human control the jinn whips chains what how will a human control a jinn there is nothing that the human has that the jinn can be controlled by that's what allah gave to sulaiman no other person has that power the jinn controls the human emotionally it tells the human do this do this do this the human does it in return what does the jinn do some tricks and trades to make the magician happy